So now I'd finally something positive besides all the, the negative things of Frank that I just told you is that we have been coming together, bringing many movements from different places, uh, many countries together to stop this. And last year in Germany, we organized a demo when the Bundesrat was voting to allow the LNG terminals financing them with 130 million euros. Fridays for Future, a couple of activists uh, had made a signature campaign and the president of the Bundesrat came out and got the signature, smiled, was very nice, but then he went in and voted for these terminals to go ahead with the support of the Green Party. Unfortunately, they were key for this to go ahead. And that's also one reason why it's very important for us to put pressure on the Green Party to hold them accountable for, 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 for doing as they say and not allowing this kind of things to go ahead. So this was a little example bringing together different movements. It was a small demo for what needed to be to make any difference because we didn't have much time to organize it. It was quite secret. Nobody really knew that this was even happening. Then uh, in Sweden, we got a first victory. Uh, there was a blockade that we did at the port of Gothenburg to prevent an LNG terminal under construction from being connected and approved. And we blocked the port of Gothenburg for a whole day with many movements and uh, local activists. And this made national news all over the country. It was the biggest civil disobedience action in Swedish history. And soon after that, the government had to make a decision on the LNG terminal and, and they voted to deny the permit on climate grounds. So it was a complete success, not only because of this action, but a lot of prior work done by the local movement. But it shows that it can be done. You know, and uh, it, this would be impossible to imagine in Argentina. You want to do a blockade, yeah, everyone ends up in jail. They might be tortured, they might be disappeared. You don't do this in the global south, but in Europe we can do actions that are low risk and have a high impact. So, and they have a direct connection to the people in the front lines because this gas that was going to come to Sweden, a lot of it will be extracted sooner or later around the across the time in the years from the global south as well. So then there's the case of Ireland that is a great example of how we can have a successful strategy as Ireland is on course to become the first country in the world, not only to have banned fracking, but to ban the import of fracked gas. And if we can expand this victory, we will deal the final blow to the fracking industry as Europe is one of the biggest destinations of this gas. And without this destination, the industry cannot go ahead. So we did this action with Extinction Rebellion last year, gluing the science on the energy department, which was very good. Like the media covered it and there was a lot of attention paid to it. No one could argue against the science. So slowly the government of Ireland had to, they were defeated communicationally. They had to admit that this gas was fracked and therefore all of this lie that they had built as a transition fuel went down. And that's why now, the government has committed to banning the import of fried gas. It's not yet made into a law, but it should happen soon. And then on the other, to the right side, I managed to meet with Pope Francis and to get his support for this fight. And this was uh, broadcast in some Irish newspapers and Ireland being a Catholic countries. It caused some trouble, especially among some conservative politicians. It helps stir some more debate. And I put this here as well because some people don't like extinction or radical uh, movements. They say they're too radical. Some people don't like the Pope or the church because it's too conservative. But I, I want to make the point that this is a survival fight and that we must employ all possible nonviolent means uh, to win it and we cannot be picky. Then I will show you a, a little video at the end of the presentation that explains how we can connect the global south and the global north. This is the action we did in February when the first export of fried gas from Argentina arrived in Spain and how now this Friday we're going to multiply that with many more countries of Africa, Latin America, uh, Asia and in Europe building this brotherhood and sisterhood links and connecting the dots between the industry so that we can bring it to an end. This is what I was talking about, about Ireland moving to block the import of fracked gas and to, to cease with the projects for two LNG terminals that they were planning to build in that country. 
then in Germany a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, we did another action at the the Hanover government place where the decisions are made for the LNG terminals, and it was in the national news. Uh, some activists glued their hands to the walls, and this made headlines. And the police couldn't do anything all day, and there was no consequences, pretty much. So. You know, I was thinking as yeah, someone from the Global South, you could never do this anywhere else in the world, pretty much. You want to do this in Africa or in Asia or in Latin America, you're, you'll get your hand, your skin ripped off and be thrown in jail or worse. So again, in Europe, we have the luxury and the window of opportunity where civil disobedience and these actions can make a great impact and have a very low risk compared to the people of the rest of the world. And we need to use that. This is not only a luxury, but it, it's even a responsibility to use this opportunity to, to move ahead with the environmental changes we need to make to prevent the actions that are destroying the planet. So in a nutshell, the reason I am discussing this is, you know, shale gas has the worst greenhouse emissions of any fossil fuel. It's a, an, an amazing example, a huge example of co capitalism and, and colonialism, and it's a climate time bomb. And most importantly, it's a strategic target for us that can allow us to bring down later on the entire fossil fuel industry and the entire gas sector. Because as an opportunity, it's a communicational opportunity. It's, fracking is so negative, it's indefensible. More than 80% of the public in Europe is strongly against it. The, the, the legal framework is in our favor. It's already been banned or put moratorium on. So it's a very powerful argument for us to bring down a narrative that has told people all over the world that gas is clean. And by bringing this down, beginning with the weakest point, which is the shale, the fracking point, slowly then all of the narrative will come down because people will realize they have been lied to. This is happening in, in Ireland. After defeating the narrative on frac gas, now people are naturally discussing that conventional gas, they have realized is now better. And conventional gas also has similar uh, emissions as coal. So we need to stop it all. And uh, but now, now is the time because as I said, the fracking industry is in its worst financial crisis to date. So we can come together. We need to come together as a global climate movement and deal with the final blow before it can recover and resume its expansion when it's consolidating in a few companies.